it's Joe, and I'm gonna show you now how to make the most dangerous meatballs in the world. Dangerous because once you start making these, everybody's gonna want you to make them. I'm serious. I've made these meatballs before for people. They talk about them for years, and you're gonna see it's gonna be the same thing if you make these meatballs. They're easy, it's simple, and you're gonna love it. I'm telling you, you're gonna love it, okay? So first, let me tell you about my new knife. I got this knife on my 60th birthday as a gift. My friend Anthony and his wife gave it to me. It's like some Japanese knife. It is amazing. It's like the sharpest thing I've ever had. It's amazing how good this thing is. I don't promote any products, but this is really a good knife. But let's get back to the meatballs. I made these meatballs many years ago, about 14 years ago to be exact, when I first met Shirley, and she absolutely went bananas over them. Her daughter loved them. I've given this recipe out to a million people. So now I'm gonna give you the recipe, because I haven't made them actually in a while, because it's a lot of work, but we're gonna make them tonight, because I have guests coming tomorrow. So here's what you need to make these meatballs. Okay, first thing you need, you need your meat, and there's a combination of pork, veal, and... Beef. Beef, pork, veal, and beef. You need some eggs. You need some Arnold bread that you've had out for about three days that's nice and hard. You need some good cheese. Don't skimp on the good cheese. That's See? a Romano, right? That's Pecorino Romano. Pecorino Romano. And then some breadcrumbs, salt and pepper, and let me tell you what you don't need in this. You don't need garlic. You don't need to put garlic in these meatballs. Yeah, I know what you're gonna say. Meatballs need garlic. You don't put them in here, and you'll see why at the end. And also, just so you know, these meatballs get fried. We don't bake meatballs in this house. Fried is the only way to go. So I want you to stand by now, and we're gonna start getting the stuff all together, and I'll show you how to make these. First thing you wanna do is you wanna get your bread. It's nice and hard, so you wanna cut the crust off the bread. As you can see, it's nice and crunchy. Cut it up like this. Cut up the little pieces, and I surely would say you save the rest for the birds here, so we'll give this for the birds tomorrow. Cut into little cubes, and I got about maybe eight slices of bread, about two pounds of meat. The measurements for meatballs are not exact, so you're not gonna get it. So this is what we got. We got the little chunks here. Now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna get some milk. I'm gonna put a little milk in this. Not a lot, not that much. So now what's gonna happen is, it's gonna like absorb everything. And it'll sit here for a minute and absorb everything. Let's put a little more in there. And this will sit on the side for a minute. Now we get the meat right here. And you're gonna have to put some eggs in it. I can't tell you how many eggs you gotta put in it. It's all a feel thing, and I'm gonna show you how I how I determine how, how many eggs to put in this. So we're gonna put two in first. Actually, we're gonna put three in because these are kind of small. And then we're just gonna start mixing it up a little bit with the egg. And what are you looking for when you're mixing this egg? Well, it's gonna be, it's a feel thing. And I'll show you when I start rolling meatballs, how you can tell if it's ready to um, become a meatball. So once you got it going a little bit like this, throw in a little bit of breadcrumbs, not a lot. You wanna do any measurements slowly. You don't wanna to put too much of any one thing in there. I use seasoned breadcrumbs. I don't normally put anything else in them. I don't use a lot of breadcrumbs. And now, I'm gonna get some of this bread. Let's see if it's ready yet. Nope, needs a little few more minutes to be ready yet. So we're gonna wait two more minutes for this, and then we're gonna get that a little softer with the milk, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so the meat is kind of mixed up with the eggs in it. This is what the bread looks like with the milk. It's kind of like a mush. You wanna get a fork, try not to get too much milk in there, and you wanna dump some in there. Like I said, for real meatballs, there really is no exact measurements. It's more of a feel thing. So I'm putting about this much in there. And I'm going to start mixing it in the, uh, in the mixture. 
and I may add some more in a second. Before we do anything, I'm going to put some Romano cheese in there. And the, the secret, the whole thing with the Romano cheese is you want to put enough in there, but you don't want to put too much in there because then it gets too salty. And there's a way to figure it out. How's that? Well, you'll see in a minute. Mmm. Yeah, too much cheese ruins the flavor. It does. You need to have the right mix. It does. All right, we got the cheese going there. And we're going to put a little bit of black pepper in here now. And a little bit of this, I, I've been using this Himalayan salt. It's pretty good. And I put a, right, a little bit of regular salt in there too. Not going to be too salty, trust me. I've made this a million times. Okay, you see how the mixture now is getting like stiff, like bat, like thick batter? That's what you want. So now we're going to just keep mixing this for a while. And we're going to mix this for a couple more minutes. And I may add a little bit more milk. I may add a little milk in there if it's too thick. And I'm going to show you that in a second. But in a minute, we're going to come back and roll some meatballs. So stand by. You see how the mixture in the bowl, it's not sticking to the side of the bowl? That's how you know you're getting close. That's how you know it's almost ready. And it's the same thing with when you roll it in your hands. When you roll a meatball in your hands, you do not want it to stick to your hands. It should not stick to your hands. If it stick to your hands, it's too wet. This is a, actually a pretty good mixture. So I'm gonna mix it a few more minutes and uh, we're gonna roll a meatball. Okay, we're ready for the first meatball. Now, you got a whole pot of meat here and before you decide that you gotta commit yourself to making all the meatballs, what you wanna do is make a test meatball. I'm a big fan of this. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna make a little tiny meatball right now, like this, just a little tiny one, okay? I got some oil here on the stove, and I like these little digital thermometers here, and I like to get to around 350, 370, perfect. We're just gonna cook one quick meatball. We're gonna cook it through and through. So put it in. And we're going to let that cook for a minute. We're going to pull it out and we're going to taste it. Stand by. We're going to taste the meatball in about two seconds. Cooked it for about maybe a minute and a half, two minutes on each side. And it's going to sit now and cool down for a minute. And my assistant Shirley here is going to taste it. Hold on one minute. Let it cool down. Ooh, lucky me. Okay, it's cool. Let's give it a shot. Give it a shot. Let's see how it is. Needs a little more Romano cheese. What do you think? And a pinch of salt. And a pinch of salt. Now we're gonna do it. But it might be enough with just a Romano cheese. Okay. Stand by, we're gonna just put a little more in there. Okay, here's our second test meatball. Let's see. Taste the way there. I don't know. Are you going to have to do a third, or did you get it? I don't know. Well, Let's we see. added some Romano and some salt, right? That's pretty damn That's good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's it. That's it. We're that, gonna roll some more. In yeah. It. Now we're gonna roll. We're gonna roll some out. And I'm gonna show you how to cook them because we're gonna be putting them in the sauce. And when you when I do them, I just cook the outside of it on a high flame to like crisp them up, and I don't cook them through and through. And then I'm gonna dump them right in the pot of sauce. So stand by. We're gonna roll. Some, I'm gonna roll some meatballs in about two seconds. Okay. Now we're gonna roll some meatballs. Make sure your hands are clean. I don't use gloves, never have, probably never will. You get a little meatball. The thing with meatballs is, there's two things you gotta remember. They can't be too big. Anytime you see like these giant meatballs, they usually suck. They gotta be the right size, number one. And number two, when you're doing meatballs with your hands, if they're done right and the meat mixture's right, it's not gonna stick to your hands. So I like to make meatballs about this big. Like a golf ball. Like a big golf ball. See, see you now nothing's sticking to my hands. If it's sticking to your hands, something's wrong. 
So I'm gonna put, we'll make four quick ones right here. And since they're going right in the sauce, these, what I do is I do not cook them through and through. I just like kind of sear the outside of them and throw them directly in the sauce. And the rest of the time, they're gonna cook in the sauce. Now, as for the garlic we talked about before, the garlic here that I don't have in here. The reason I don't have the garlic in there is because my sauce there has a lot of garlic in it. And what I like to do is I like to have the garlic from the sauce infused into the meatballs, as opposed to the meatballs having all the garlic taste. That's just a personal preference that I have. I know Shirley kind of likes it the same way too, because I've been making the same way for years. And so what I'm gonna do is, I got four of them here. I'm just gonna dump in the hot oil there quick. Woo -hoo. And we're gonna cook them up a little bit and uh, flip them over, maybe uh, two minutes on each side, just so they're nice and uh, you know crisp. Crisp is the main thing you wanna get here. Then end up right in the sauce. So we'll be right back in about, what, two minutes. Okay, it's been a couple minutes, and I'm just flipping them over now. And you can see, that's what I'm going for. That nice dark, kind of almost, almost a border bit of a burn. And then we're gonna flip them over, and keep them right there. And then another two minutes, I'm gonna get them. I'm gonna put them in this dish right here, get the excess oil off of them, and then go right in this pot. So stand by, we'll be right back. Now this is what they look like when they're cooked. Or I should say, partially cooked. They're only cooked on the outside, and that's what you want. You don't want to cook them all in the fry pan, because then they're going to get dry. And also, if your meatballs are breaking up in the fry, when you're frying them, you probably got too much liquid involved with it. So, you see, these don't break up at all. They're nice and, nice and firm. But if you are making something like just straight meatballs, like you're going to make a meatball parmesan sandwich or something like that, you want to, you got to cook them all the way through. This is only half cooked. So, he's going to rest for a little while, because they're kind of tired. And after they rest for a while, they're going to go right in the sauce. So stand by. Well, they're probably tired because you've been like smooshing them. So yeah, much. I'm, I'm moving them around like this the whole time. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna roll some more meatballs and, and uh, I'll show you the, the final product here. Okay, we got 29 meatballs, 29 meatballs, and actually, you wanna know something? I didn't roll one of these. You know who rolled them? My assistant Shirley, the perfectionist. Look at these meatballs; they're all perfect. But just to play it safe, I just wanna like make sure. You know, yeah, there's a couple off ones here, honey. You know, a few of these are off. Hey, I told you they're not perfect. I don't know. I, don't know. I, see I told you they're just very good. I don't know. Some of these are off a little bit. I don't know. Well, anyway, so now the other ones, the four that we originally made, are nice and cool now, and we're just gonna pop them right in the pot with the sauce. You know, it's a good thing you're young. You'll get over the fact that they're not perfect. All right, and our oil is at just about 325 degrees, which is, that's just fine. And we're gonna dump some in here. And just keep repeating the process, put them in the sauce, put them in the sauce. And then what you wanna do is, ideally, you'd like to put the meatballs in the sauce, cook it for about an hour, put it in the fridge, and serve it the next day. You don't wanna serve it the first, that, that day if you can. I like to make the stuff sit for a while. It actually tastes a lot better. Keeping the sauce, in the fridge for a day is definitely the way to go. So, if you want to see more of my recipes, check out my YouTube channel, Brooklyn Joe's Cooking Show. And bon appetit! Bon appetit, that's one thing to say. So long, everybody.